Making a move, making a hustle, running and making a ballers. When I say Pat, Pat, to say Pat and Brands. Pat, Pat. Pat, Pat. <laughs> ah, you gotta love it, man. I'm probably one of the few people you know that have a soundtrack to their lives. All right, cool. Um, let, let's give it up for Mpumi one more time and the other panelists. They really did a phenomenal job. Great stuff. So now we are on part two. You know, um, I don't want to say they saved the best for last type of thing because that's going to sound corny. But everyone that has been on this platform is really the best. You know, when I started Pattern Brands, the vision was that if you are a marketer in SA and you haven't been invited to come and be a storyteller on this platform, it means there's some work to do. You still have a lot of work to do. So, um, but yeah, but then again, also with the feedback that we've been getting, a lot of people are like, but Pat, yeah, we get that you bring out the big guns. You know, I'm talking people in the C-suites and directors, marketing directors, CMOs, CEOs, MDs, but also there's young stars that are also, you know, doing great things. And why don't you also feature them? So that also, imagine now you're a young professional, you see another young professional doing uh, great things. It, it's inspiring, you know? And um, yeah, without a further ado, this coming up, I mean, I mean, this panel right now is made out of, 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 of that. So we've got the legendary uh, Tebe Kalafe. Um, if you may please come on stage, Tebe. And then we also have um, Kentan Mkombo, um, who's the brand uh, manager for Castle Mixed Out. Uh, actually, I should be saying she's an award-winning brand manager. Um, yeah, and congratulations. Uh, it's a pet from us. We hear that you, you are the best marketer in the region, according to SAB. <laughs> yes, or at SAB, rather. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got Hazel Shozi, communications manager from MTN. I don't know why you said it. Okay, men this side, ladies that side, but anyway. <laughs> okay, I will move up quite Yeah. But I'm closer to you. Or maybe you should have, uh, I mean, Hazel, you should have said this side, then braces this side, normal to that side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great. Um, thank you so much for making the time um, to be with us today. Um, it's really a great honor, and um, it's, this is not a, a time I take for granted. As Pattern Brands, we're wrapping up um, the year for us, particularly from the Pattern Brands Dialogue side. We've had an incredible year. Um, we've had MTN being a partner at some, at some stage with our Women's Month series and Old Me Trial as well. And the platform is growing, you know, and that's what we are about. But without further ado, I just want to ask you a simple question, and I'm going to start with you, Mr. T, in terms of what has been some of your observations, particularly in the marketing sphere um, in the past two years, and what's standing out for you in that process? Such difficult questions. I was tempted to say, tell us about yourself, but then no, no, that's no. also going to be funny. No, that'll be a whole year. I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think, um, I think what we're seeing there now is um, the consumers are truly in charge now. So when I was growing up in marketing, um, came across a marketing director, I think he was Unilever or somewhere in, uh, in Canada. And he said something very profound. And he said, um, the job of a marketer, so I'm going to disagree with AB now. He said the job of a marketer is to go so far ahead into the future so that when the consumers arrive, they find them ready to serve them. Sure. So, um, so, so what we are seeing now is uh, the consumer actually now has gone ahead of the marketer. So now it's the opposite. So the, uh, so the marketer is now chasing the consumer who is truly in charge and they're in charge of their content they're in charge of their creativity. Mm -hmm. They're in charge of their channels. They are truly in charge. So if, they, if there's one thing that technology has done, it has empowered 
the consumer and the consumer is in charge. To me, that's the biggest, uh, that's the biggest trend. And I'm sure there's many others. But that's what stands out. That's what keeping marketers um, uh, up every day. That's why every time you speak to clients, you speak to everybody, the first thing they talk about, they talk about uh, digital. We want to get digital. Because they say they want to get digital, but what they're really saying is we want to reach the consumer where they are today, and they are all behind the screens. Mm. Hazel and Kinsani, you are the marketers of today. <laughs> right, um, Tebe has played his part when he was at Nike, leading um, um, that brand in the continent. Do you feel like you're behind the consumer from a, a, a young brand manager's perspective? Kinsani, do you want to take it? Do you think you want? No, I mean, I, I take it. I'm just listening. Is it? Is it on? Yeah, I'll take it. I think, I mean, I'll speak from the um, context of my brand um, yeah. in particular. Um, a, and I think what, what I've been fortunate with is to work for a brand that's always been about the people, right? Yeah. So, I mean, Castle Most has always been about, you know, we want to be close to the people and we want to be close to, because we positioned ourselves as a brand, you know, that speaks about culture, which is a tough space, right? Um, but what that does is it holds us accountable to be behind the consumer yeah. as well as in front of the consumer, right? Yeah. By that, I mean, you know, we find ourselves having to listen very closely um, to what our consumer is saying number one, but yeah. also be held accountable to what we say on behalf of our consumer. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken, you know, the role of advocating for culture, right? Sure. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a tough space to be in, you know, as Absolutely. a brand, right? And, you know, it could easily go south. You know, Easily so. Yeah, but but you know, so so it it, it, it it's a two pronged approach where we need to be behind and in front of the consumer. If I if I'm answering you, mm. Hazel. Sure, I think um, maybe I'll leave. You some. are even a PhD candidate at UKZN, <laughs> so you should be ahead of us here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ahead of all of us. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll speak from my communications lens um, at this point. I think when you know speaking to um, trends and is the mic on? Is it on? I don't know. I think it's on. Yeah. Is it on? Yeah. 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 Um, I, from a comms lens um, point of view, I, I think you know one thing that the digital transformation has done for our brands, and mo most importantly, I think speaking from an MTN point of view, is that it has forced. I mean, you look at look at how strategies like social media were add-ons. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, these things were just, you know, add-ons, social media, digital yeah. e-commerce and stuff. But now what it has forced That's us to do is actually to bring it forth now and it, it, it has to now lead our, you know, our, our journeys for our, for our customers. So yeah. um, I think one, that's one of the trends I think I've noticed. Um, second of all is definitely storytelling. So we're no longer just bombarding our consumers with, you know, uh, you know high-end, um, you know, strategies that are glorified. How, bloopers don't actually happen anymore i mean have you uh, how many times did we have ads where they actually land on tv and our consumers are not happy they're like no that is a bit racist that's a bit but now what's happening is that now research has to go in so going back to phd that helps a lot because research is definitely shaping how we are actually sending out messages out there to our co consumers so yeah definitely some and the year of the influencer also i think that's also <laughs> one of my top three trends yeah. definitely uh, yeah. definitely the year of influencer uh, it, 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 they, they were able to still be gone through <laughs> 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 Why don't you have enough mics for... True. Sorry, please hold that thought. No, I was... I was yeah? The, someone is sitting on a mic. Hey, Zay. Oh, there. You. Me, I'm the guilty one. No, I, I was saying that the influencers <laughs> are, on, are only here for two hours. They'll yeah. be gone very soon. Because the ultimate influencer is the consumer. Uh, because we're all tired of these influencers, right? Yeah. We're tired of people who just stand in front of a car or or hold us something that they would never buy with their money or that they cannot actually afford, uh, and they're trying to influence us, and we also can't afford them. <laughs> so, uh, so unfortunately, that um, so I'm not a great fan of influencers, obviously. Also. Sure. <laughs> people always say, "I want to be an influencer." <laughs> <No>. <laughs> What do I say? Mr. T, you are <laughs> killing people's careers here and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. T, I mean, you, you've worked a lot w with a lot of brands and also you've traveled the, the continent extensively, you know, and you've seen sort of how people interact with different brands um, in different contexts mm -hmm. altogether. So what has been some of your 
observation, now drawing back to our theme of saying our stories through brands. You know, um, I believe that brands are an extension of who we are as a people. I mean, for example, just today, how many brands have I interacted with? You know, and they sort of form part of my life, technically. You know, um, I can't do without my iPhone 7. It's not the iPhone 13, you know, but it, 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 it plays such a, a, an integral role. What have you seen outside of the borders of South Africa? Well, I don't even think we have to go outside. Our, well, I'm not sure why we keep saying storytelling is a new thing. Uh, it's, uh, brands have always been a great story well to, uh, told well. Uh, so, sure. so the problem is uh, uh, most of us like to trendify or to make everything a trend. Uh, just because you just saw it today does not make, mean it's, an, it's, a, it's, it's a new thing. Uh, and uh, because all that stories are, stories really just mean that are you able to connect uh, with a consumer authentically. Uh, and you don't have to go outside or inside the borders. So, I mean, uh, one of the ones that I'm uh, quite interested, I mean, watching just with interest, is how Batu is telling the story of his brand. So forget the story, forget his story about what he, how he started Batu, yes. but look at how he has integrated uh, the story into the great African narrative, Motoki Motokabat. Uh, mm. um, are, are you with me? Yeah. And, and it also tells the story of, uh, you know, if you look at his positioning about walk your journey. Yeah. Uh, so it's a whole story. Uh, so, and w that's why when you, when, you, when you look at his posts and you look at his, thi his narrative, he's always telling a story, a story that a consumer can relate to. Because mm. my storytelling is about relatability. Because yeah. storytelling is about being able to tell you to talk about your brand in a way that engages, yeah. in a way that um, uh, that is authentic, uh, in a way that is attractive, in a way that people can relate to. So, so that's I mean that's a beautiful brand. I mean that's why I think um, it's. I mean it, it was an absolute surprise to us that uh, this year it ranked in the in the top ten um, African brands sure. uh, in in our brand Africa 100 list. Uh, we were all dumbfounded, but then I learned why. I learned why it, it did so well. Uh, remember, he, he, he partnered with Castle Light. Yes. So that took the story beyond South Africa. Oh. Um, he partnered with Somizi. That took the story beyond South Africa. Because uh, remember, the, for people to love a brand, they don't necessarily have to touch it. They mm. just have to feel it. Mm. And they felt it beyond the continent. But if you go uh, outside of South Africa, uh, you look at a, a, a brand like Equity Bank. I mean, it's an old story, but I still love it so much. That um, in the, uh, so what he understood in building the Equity Bank, he understood that uh, then, it's changed a little bit now, that women then could not, um, uh, could not afford to, make a to put down a collateral mm -hmm. uh, when they're going to ask for a, for, for, for a loan. So sure. what did he do? He then went into the culture. He went into uh, the people and tried to understand. So what is the one thing that a woman in East Africa, in Kenya, values? They, values, uh, they value their bed. Because when they get married, they get given a bed. Mm. As a, by the father gives them a bed. Uh, and uh, so what the bank then says, we'll take your bed as collateral. We won't take it, but we'll attach your bed sure. as collateral. Because <laughs> he knows one thing. They know one thing. They will not let the bed go. And they will pay the money later. So the story is sometimes not told. The story sometimes is deduced. So, because it's not always about having to spell out a story. Sometimes it's about the story telling itself. So when a consumer looks at that, uh, when he looks at that simple, uh, simple narrative of you can use your, 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 your lobola, whatever, your dowry, whatever that bit, I don't know what we can call that as a collateral. They can relate to the story. They can engage with it. So you see what I mean? So yeah. I think that's, that's sort of how I see, but then there's multiple uh, uh, stories about relationships with brands and all those things, because people have said it all the time, that um, yeah. uh, what brands do as well is they reflect uh, people's ambitions. You know, uh, if I look at the top 100 brands, um, uh, our survey across the continent, 10% of them are luxury brands. Uh, yeah. Ferrari, Versace, Louis Gucci. Vuitton and Gucci and uh, and you say, but those countries are supposed to be poor. How <laughs> do they uh, afford those uh, brands? Yeah. They don't afford the brands. But when you go around the countries, 
and you, you see them, you see them wearing those Louis Vuitton upside down. You see them with those Adidas stripes which are facing the wrong way. Yeah. And you see them, <laughs> all those things. So, because all they are buying into, they are buying into the story of that brand, mm. what that brand promises them. Because that brand says, if you associate yourself with this brand, yeah. you are someone who's either headed somewhere or somebody who's in a certain uh, part of a certain um, uh, club. Because yeah. what is a brand? A brand is a society. A brand is a community. So when you buy into a Do brand, yeah. you are buying into that community. And the stories that get told are the stories that that community tell about yeah. you. So Yeah. That's a brilliant point you're making about storytelling, that it has always been something that's there. You know, Castle Mixed Out also embarked on um, a beautiful journey of storytelling um, with the campaign, our, I mean, last, last Stories of Culture. You know, do you want to take us through that um, journey in terms of how that concept came about and why did you decide to tell those two particular stories that you told um, through Last Stories of Culture? Yeah, first, I, I mean, I'm, yo, I'm so passionate about this campaign um, because I think it's one that hits very close to home. Um, that campaign wasn't actually necessarily about the storytelling, um, although we told the story, but it was yeah. actually about the urgent need to continue to tell our stories, sure. especially as um, black people. Yeah, black people, it's safe to say that. Yeah, it's safe, yeah, it's <laughs> a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially as black people. And I, and I think with us, I mean, the insight was that, right, yeah. is our stories are normally told by people outside. You mm, look mm. at, you know, the Mandela movie, you look at, you know, and we don't get to tell our version of our own stories. Absolutely. And we find that it, it gets misconstrued. Yeah. You know, whoever will tell the version of the story that they want to tell, yeah. you know, and we wanted to reach out to young people in mm. particular, although we were very deliberate in using the older generation because, you know, they are the catalyst of the people that hold, yeah. you know, the knowledge and the story and the wisdom behind it, right? But yeah. we are the people that need to carry it forward. Now, for those that do not know or haven't watched that m beautiful Please movie, can you just, spoiler alert, yeah, just tell, <laughs> tell us briefly what <laughs> Castle Mixed Out did. did. The last stories of culture. Yeah. Yeah. So we went on, on, on a journey. I mean, and we looked at uh, quite a few stories, but we basically went on a journey to identify stories of culture that were dying. Um, and we found these two stories that, you know, we thought, my gosh, these two drive the points across. So we found Uoma Katrina, um, who, who lives in Uppington, and she's the last speaker of a language called Ngu. Um, most of you will know, you know, the Khoisan people are quite neglected and they've been trying to get their voices heard. But what was, you know, um, important about this story or what we wanted to highlight is she's the last person of a language that has existed for over 25,000 years. She's the last. And she's old, guys. She's not even, you know, it's not like she's got many years ahead of her. It's not like, you know, that legacy has been passed on. She's made attempts to try and teach, you know, um, Abba Zugulbaik and all of these people. But, you know, the young people aren't really taking interest. So with her dies a language, a culture, you know, it's not just with her dies so many things about people. And it's, it's forever gone. Right, and you know that's what we wanted to tell. Similar to, um, we also went to Eastern Cape, Uma Dosini. Um, if if you if you find her story as well, both of these women have done efforts to actually tell their stories. Right, so Uma Dosini plays, you know, these beautiful musical instruments that were played as a young woman, you know, as as a young woman that's coming of age within the Kosa culture, um, which is Umkhupe and Uhati. And you know what she was telling is the story of how this is linked to her journey as a young woman, to her ancestry to her culture and all of that she found to be dying right so you know young people don't practice you know cultures anymore it's not really important we've come to you know Joburg we you know we are at our fancy varsities we kind of lose our way we kind of lose you know who we are and you know um, we thought you know that's 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 the, there's an urgent need here you know, to preserve culture. And that's why we went on this journey. And that's really what Last Stories of Culture is. We told the stories, but what's nice about this is it wasn't scripted. They told the stories. We didn't sure. even have a plan. Mm. We went there and we said, okay, this is who we are. Tell us your story. So you just went there with the cameras. We went there with a the camera. Yeah. And we said, we want to hear you. Mm. And we want to tell us your story. We want to learn from you. Then what did you say when uh, Omar said, kun, 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 uh, what was the response? I said the same. 
Um, he's <laughs> Mia want to see her. You say she's you say she's twenty five thousand years old. No. no oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The language is 25,000, you know. Yeah, she's, she's yes. old. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, actually yeah. want to go back to Vincani. Um, so with storytelling, this doesn't ha have to mean that they are your target audience. I mean, she's not. A, she's probably not. The, both of them are probably not milk no. start drinkers. Yeah. But do we tell that story regardless? Yeah, we tell that story regardless because the message about it is not about them. So we're yeah. not we're not shining the lights on Oma Katrina or Oma Dosmini. Yeah. We're telling young people, guys, if you don't preserve your story, yeah. you will become an Oma Katrina and Oma Dosmini. Oh. Right? So wake up and tell your story. Okay. You know, yeah. be the person, you know, mm. I, like, I mean, I learned, I, I, I mean, I always tell the story and I'm yeah. always honest about it, yeah. right? In that, you know, my father's Tonga, my mom is Mozambique, she's also Tonga, but my Tonga is bad, guys. Yeah. Like, I, I speak Tonga, but it's bad, you know? Sure. And, you know, it, for me, that's why I say this campaign is so close to my heart because it really inspired me to start learning and be deliberate about it yeah. because my parents, mm. if my parents go, um, I've lo it's lost. Like yeah, what it's am it's I passing yeah. on to my okay. kids? You know, sure. it's this English that I've yeah. learned, yeah. you know, and, you know, um, I, I need mm. to be deliberate about learning about my culture so that, okay. you know, I pass it on to generations to come and so that it is told in my version. Mm. Nobody mm. else's version. Your voice. My voice. No, that's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, uh, they say if a language is not spoken, mm. it dies. That's so that's the whole genesis of it, I guess. Hazel, you spoke about uh, the importance of, of research and obviously that's why you're embarking on being Dr. Shozi. You know, um, I know you're still early in, in, in your process, but what are you hoping to, to, to uncover um, with, with your, your research? Sure, a lot, hey? um, a lot. I, I, I think the research plays a lot now, um, more than ever, in you know, the digital transformation conversation that's happening a lot now in corporates, um, because essentially how do you deliver good stories if you don't know who you're speaking to? Right, mm. so uh, we need to understand our audience. Um, we need to know how to deliberately land messages that they understand that they can engage with, and you know, um, using all different platforms. I mean, some one of the, um, the the arenas I'm playing in is also within the media the medium space. You yeah. know, how do you communicate to your guys um, using the different platforms? And if there are new platforms, are they actually working? Are they worth embarking on? Are they, you know, um, what's the return for an organization? Um, but I think right now, I think if if anything. We are losing the, the 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 volume around return. It's more on landing your message and the storytelling, the stories that are coming through. Versus, yeah. did we make a sale of we mm. milked out through those stories? Mm. It's not that, but it's now landing these new narratives and yeah. comp and, and organizations being more meaningful about what they do. Sure. Yeah. Um, Mr. T, you've I mean, you've walked the path before many of us here, uh, particularly in the industry, and I think for the longest time since I also started on this journey of becoming a marketer, there's always been a conversation around transformation, <laughs> you know, <laughs> of, of the advertising and communications industry. And I think it still is. I remember this one time watching a Megzone Media. It was an episode on Megzone Media, and they were going to talk about transformation. And they had Muzi Kuzwayo on the panel, you know? Uh, they were at Gibbs. So... When when uh, when uh, Jeremy Max posed the question about transformation and what needs to be done, you know, to transform the industry, Muzi stood up and staged a uh, staged a walk out, a walk out to say, "I'm actually tired of talking." You know, um, even to this day, we're still talking about transforming <laughs> um, the industry. In your own opinion, why do you think this industry? is not transforming. Because also, the reason why I'm asking this question, it also speaks to the stories that brands tell about the majority of this country. Well, the I hope I'm not putting you on the spot about you this. Are, you are. No, no. <laughs> the industry is not transforming because black people are not transforming. So uh, black people have not transformed to the idea that they are now free, that they own their stories, they own their culture, they should own their country. They should own their communication. That's why it's not uh, transforming. I mean, when I was the chairman of Luris, you know, as the first, being the first, I hate to talk about first, but as the first darky chairman of Luris, I tried to change 
uh, I changed two things. I changed the criteria then, and I changed the judging to make to bring forward. Because when I became chairman, I don't think there were any black people as uh, in in Luris. Yeah. And I tried to get oh there were, but you know here there. But uh, but being the chairman, I tried to change the number of black people uh, on to, onto the panels. At least I pushed for that. Yeah. I changed the criteria. But as soon as I left, they changed everything back. Uh, you know, so, so that's what happened. So all your so, work. So that's what happened because, um, uh, you know, we, we, you can only uh, do so much. But I think that the real truth of why the industry is not changing is because black people are not transforming. Uh, until the day we transform, the day we take control of our own narrative, the day we take control of our communication, the day we say, are you talking to me? If you're going to talk to me, and you are not including me to create the communication about mm -hmm. me, then you are not talking to me. So that's why we're not transforming. So sure. uh, I understand the frustrations um, that we have, but I don't understand them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why, I mean, you know me well, that's why everything I've tried to do, I've tried to say, I am not going to buy into somebody else's idea or vision. I'm going to create a new path. That's why when I started a branding agency then, and there weren't any black branding agencies uh, when I started uh, a brand leadership then, is I did not become a BE partner of somebody. Mm. I did not go and get people who've already been in the industry and bring them in and say, teach me how to do this. I said, I'm going to walk this path my own way. Sure. And when I started my school this year, uh, yeah. as you know, it's I'm walking it my own way. I'm not going to triple A or Vega or Vets and all those people and saying to them, teach me how to do this. Mm. I'm saying that I'm going to walk it my way because if I do it my way, uh, then we'll be able to do it in an authentic way from where I come from. Sure. Until we transform, this industry is never going to transform. We are still stuck in the past. Uh, mm. That's why we have not transformed. So any black person who keeps going about the industry is not transforming. Uh, they must take out a mirror and look at themselves. They're the ones who are stuck in the dark ages. I can't sure. I really um, Hazel, um, obviously without yeah. someone touching your future bag, what's your take as a young um, um, communications marketing professional at a big corporate um, what's your stance on this? Do you think we, you and I and everyone else haven't transformed or we are not transforming? He's really spot on. Tib is really spot on on this conversation. And I, I, I spoke about this when I spoke to the Boston students um, not so long ago. But I was just saying um, there's certain things that you're going to have to change for yourself and for the people that come after you. And yeah. it is your responsibility. If you don't change it, it's not going to change. Um, I always make an example of it, the fact that I've also been, um, you know, I've chosen the academic route while I'm still in corporate. It's never been done before. People don't get educated. You don't find doctors in corporate. What is that? Yeah. You don't find that. And so I chose to take the part that is, you know, that different, you know, yeah. difference, right? Um, and essentially, I, I'm owning it, and it's my conversation, and I can proudly say why I, I'm actually doing it the way I want to do it, because I want to change things. I don't want to be a nine-to-fiver for the rest of my life. I want to yeah. be on boards also. I want to sit on important seats at the table, and yeah. I want to you know, contribute to, the, to the, literally the academic body of communications. So we're not just leaving it at, we went to university, and I did my degree, and I went to work, and then what did you contribute? What did you mm. leave? You know, what legacy are you trying to build in your corporate? So it doesn't mean if you're a nine to five, you can't do it. It's Absolutely. not for the business guys. It's not just for you guys. But yeah. we can also do that. Um, but it, it just takes challenging yourself and saying, I'm actually going to transform what I want for myself and I'm going to do it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there at AB and Bev, <laughs> 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 um, you, obviously you're a brand manager. Um, do you think you, as a brand manager as well, um, can suddenly... Do you have a role to play in transforming the the industry? Definitely. And I think, you know, I, I think what I've found, and, and I mean, this is also my personal journey, yeah. um, is, you know, it's literally about challenging corporate, right? So, you know, um, a, and I think I, it's a black thing, or maybe, um, it, you know, we, we kind of take the humble approach. We kind of take, you know, yeah. Thank you, boss. You know, and, and you don't want to stand up and really challenge and say, no, I don't believe yeah. in this narrative, right? I know the story. These are my people. You know, this is, you know, so it, it is about, you know, us being truthful and mm. us standing up for the truth, you sure. know, and therefore challenging the narrative. But, you right? know, in standing up for the truth, it means sabotaging your bag. 
it it does and it doesn't. I, I I you know I strongly believe it's also in the how you know that you do it right. Yeah. I, I think you know uh, there's a difference between you know ruining your relationship, but there's also a difference between putting your hand up and being honest and saying I don't agree with this, and I don't agree with this because I know this. I this is I live with these. I know these consumers. This is why I'm saying you know I'm I'm educated too. You know, I know what I'm talking about too. I've gone and done my research too. And my voice is credible too. You know, it's not about just um, allowing, you know, the narrative of the story that's always been told without being tested. And because things change, right? Yeah. And, you know, narratives change. And, you know, there's, Absolutely. There's, a, there's a narrative that we need to tell. And again, I'll always go back to black people need to tell their stories and we need to stand up for things. Because sometimes those things were screwed, man. They, they were not, the stories that are told are not the right stories. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so, I just want to take a step back because I, I think the previous um, pa um, the panel, they spoke about obviously the, the Nando saga, you know. Um, I think last year we had clicks, you know, and um, as a people, we were up in arms and we were like, no, never again. I'm going to a click store or buying my meds at a, at a click store. Um, <laughs> then a week after, we were all lining up with our loyalty cards at, at, at click store, buying from click stores, you know? So then again, it happened, it's happening now um, with, uh, with Nando's and, 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 and Gareth Cliff. So whenever these things happen, I think my observation has always been that now there's a need um, for diversity in, in the boardroom, uh, you know? I, I think clicks, they appointed, uh, uh, the black, I mean, the CEO left, and the, the, there was a, a, an incumbent of a, a black woman, I think, yeah. You know, um, every time those things happen, F from a woman's perspective as well, you know, because what's happening is that usually when a brand falters, we saw also with KPMG, with the state capture saga, that happened, and they brought in a black woman to be the CEO of, of, of the company. Don't you guys sometimes feel that like you are being used <laughs> to to clean up the mess that <laughs> exactly you know and I, and I think there's a fine line also between as a woman being given the opportunity because you truly deserve it and being used as 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 a token look I think I I'll always go back to, um, you know, this thing about us working for corporates is a very personal and deliberate journey, mm -hmm. right? And I always believe no one can use you if you're being deliberate about the journey that you're taking. Yeah, right? that's beautiful. And, and, and you, you could always, and you always have the power um, to lead the narrative. Sure. Right? And I think that's what we always miss as young people is we don't recognize our power and yeah. our power to lead the narrative and our power to steer. You know the way somebody thinks I can manipulate you into doing this? Yeah. You can do the same, right? And you can, you can steer the ship in your own way. So it's literally about us realizing our power. Um, then, I mean, who's using who? Yeah, Mr. T, you wanted to contribute? No, no, I'm just saying you can't be used unless you're a dishcloth, right? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> your, so your job is to realize, like you say, your power. So, I mean, uh, now remember in our, in our era, so maybe my, or my previous era, uh, uh, coming into corporate, being such a high profile marketer, the one that everybody looked at and uh, when there were no black marketers, uh, or at least chief marketing officers and such high profile, is and I had a, I, and I had a choice. Uh, the choice I had to I had to make is uh, could have acquiesced and just being sucked by the system, but I didn't. Uh, I mm. mean, I I I, I, I didn't necessarily quote unquote use the opportunity, but what I did is I, I asserted who I am, and um, and uh, that's why you know we're speaking uh, just now with. Um, um, uh, Marketing director from um, Tiger Brands. Uh, Tembi. From t with Tembi, sorry. We're marketing director with, with Tembi now, and Tembi was saying that um, when they saw me, they saw, oh my goodness. So it's possible for a black person to be a marketing director at such a high profile company uh, because that's our job. Our sure. job is to be uh, the example that the next gen will follow. Uh, our job is not to collect fringe benefits and big salaries. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, 80% of us go into these businesses and these jobs just to buy G, uh, G4s and uh, 
uh, and um, and uh, and Lamborghinis and all those things, and to get fringe benefits and to play golf on weekend. That's yeah. what we do. Uh, we don't realize that our job actually is quite simple. Uh, we've got a very simple job. Uh, first, yes, of course, you have to deliver on why you why, what you're there for. Okay, yeah. But in doing what you're there for, uh, you must remember that your job is to uh, is to make a difference. Yeah, is to be impactful. Sure. Uh, and it's to leave a legacy, because nobody remembers how much money you earned, mm. but remembers what difference you made for them. Yeah. Oh, that's very profound. And if I can add on that, yeah. you, you can't do that if you don't know yourself, right? Mm. Um, and Absolutely. I think that's the journey that we always need to have at the back of our minds as an, as an important one to take yeah. is at the forefront of anything you need to know yourself because mm. then you're steered in any way right where the yeah. wind blows you go that way you yeah. find yourself being all fancy and you forget you know that you're there to serve a purpose and that there's other people after you you know that you need to leave a legacy for mm. but also inspire but also open up the route for them to be even better than you were but mm, I, I, I actually, I beg to differ, guys. Um, I beg to differ. What um, who? For both of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be that's safe. the academic <laughs> speaking. <laughs> um, I, I, I do think, though, um, I mean, we, we, so you spoke about the humble pie thing, that we eat the humble pie too much as black people also. And I, I try to stay away again from that narrative of saying, you know, I cannot be you know, a great story or a great marketing professional for um, your organization A, you know, um, if I like nice things. I mean, I have no, I, I have no problems with you buying a Lamborghini, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just yeah. trying to say um, mm. most the priorities. Mm. So, uh, so I'm trying to say, of course, when you get to a certain position, um, affording those things is not a goal anymore. Okay. It yeah. just happens as, it's just par for the so course. We're not, so we're not so labeling people who've, who do that. Oh, I have no problems okay. with whatever they do with their okay. money in their okay. lives. Okay. Uh, okay. What I do okay. have a problem, what, what, I do, what I do have a problem mm -hmm. with is, uh, <laughs> is them being in those positions mm -hmm. uh, and making that a priority rather than, sh rather than performing, oh, rather than delivering, so and rather than okay. being okay. aware okay. that um, somebody else is watching. Because okay. uh, somebody else is watching, oh, uh, and um, and I'm not I'm not saying that you need to wake up every day and do that. Because I don't think I ever woke up, or even now. I mean, because I've I've had mul I've had multiple phases mm -hmm. in my career. Um, yeah. So I'm not saying uh, so. So what's happening now? So I start a university now. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's the next kid saying? The next black kid is saying, "My goodness, he's now started a higher in a higher education institute. So yeah. I can actually start a whole chain of universities now." Okay. So they're not going to do one. They're going to do uh, one in every single country. Uh, mm -hmm. That's our job. Mm -hmm. uh, so our job is to be so brilliant at what we do, okay. uh, so good at w what we do, that the focus is not on the trimmings around us, mm -hmm. but okay. it's on the trail that we leave uh, that others can follow on. Sure. But also you can do that whilst well, enjoying oh, but that's the what final I'm saying. things. What I'm life. saying is that the problem with me... So and let me give you an, I'll give you an example. I'm sure I've given it 101 times. So when I first started off uh, in New York, um, about uh, two, three weeks before I started, my mentor says to me, um, uh, T, let's go, let's go shopping. Um, he's 43, I'm 27. Because I only started working when I was 27, remember? Sure. Um, I only, no, 27, 28. I only, that's the first time I, I saw a job. Um, but I arrived, I arrived at, uh, in New York already well-groomed, well-polished. I always was polished in, uh, in those days. Um, but, and then I uh, and arrived, and, and he says to me, let's go shopping. So I said, ooh, shopping. She's, he's an executive. He's the highest-ranking black executive at Colgate Palmolive on the main street of corporate in New York. And he looked at me and says, black kid, so, so, uh, African, okay, he's educated in the US, but let's just take, let me just shape him a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we go to the shops. We, he shows me where to buy my custom-made shirts. Uh, they measure me, they get my shirts, and then I had to pay for it, obviously. He's asked me for my credit <laughs> card. <laughs> I'm already a student, it's already, I'm already on the negative side of negative, uh, you know? Yeah. So I had to pay for, my, for, my, for my, su my shirts, I had to pay for my suits, so we get suits, and then we had, so we went to his house and met with his family, and then he explained to me. He says, you know what, Tebe, you're gonna arrive at uh, the head office for the first time in three weeks' time. The day you step in, I don't want them ever to focus on how you look. He says, the, he says, the reason I want you to go to those places is because that's where all the executives shop. 
that's where all the guys who work on this street are. That's where they all shop and they all dress a certain way. Starched, beautiful shirts, uh, beautiful ties, uh, plain suits. He says, when you come in, I want them to, I want you to blend in on those other things. Or rather, I don't want them to focus on that. And I want them to talk to you. So the problem with ma many of us now is we focus on the things around them. Mm -hmm. Ah, Tebe lives here. Ah, he drives this thing. People are not focused on what you do because, uh, because they have nothing else to show but the other things. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem with what, you, with what you drive, what you eat, where you live, uh, where you sleep, where you sleep with. Uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> Uh, all, yeah. all I have a problem with is that if that's your narrative, then you've missed the point. And sure. most of us, that's our story. Most of us, our story is the story around us and not what we do. Very profound indeed. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to open the questions um, to the floor. If you guys have any questions, this is the opportunity to, to ask. Um, do you have a roaming mic? So whilst we wait for, for, for that... Um, Mr. T wants to. Um, so, obviously, you won an award today, um, I mean this evening rather. Um, what does that award mean to you? And just educate us briefly whilst we're waiting. What's that award? Yeah, because well, yeah, uh, Spear called me like, yo, breaking news <laughs> out of breaking SAB, <laughs> you know. Kensani has won the biggest award in the region uh, from SAB. I just want to find out what, what does that mean from, um, to you? Yeah, man, I think, I mean, I, I, I was also surprised, uh, but what I won today um, was an award called the Luminary Award. Mm. Um, and the, the Luminary, Luminary Award. Um, and it basic, it's basically an award that looks at, you know, all the marketers um, within our, our, uh, yeah, our sphere of, you know, wow. within SAB. Um, and really looks at the marketer who, who's kind of, you know, being most creative, created, you know, out of the box work, you know, lived wow. the culture and all of that stuff, you know, so the marketer <laughs> that has kind of stood out um, amongst the rest. That's and you. <laughs> and I think, I mean, it was a humbling one. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a humbling Blow one. Blow your horn, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Humble pie. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, no, it was a humbling one, and mm. I'll tell you why. I, I think, you know, I actually haven't been in marketing for a very long time. Um, and in my role as a brand manager for Castle Mostar, it's been nine months, actually. Sure. Um, and I think that was mind-blowing for me. But what was amazing is, you know, I've, I've been mentored, you know, by some of the great, you know, the greatest marketers yeah. um, out there. And, you know, for them to kind of take a step back and look and see that, you know, the party work, you know, was actually my work. Um, so I love the fact that you picked it up. Wow. Um, you know, but I think for me, um, and, and I've always been deliberate about telling um, African stories. Mm. Right? And so now the Tepo story it's not also about is exactly, coming it's not out. Just about most, uh, it's not about that, but it, yeah. I really live this because it's, it's something that I believe in, right? So it's the Batu story I made sure, and that really, you know, set the catalyst for Batu because then so many other brands came after that, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Um, and, and I mean, we're not taking any credit for their growth because yeah. they're an amazing brand, yeah. but you know, we were really able to use a bigger brand, you know, to tell the African narrative yeah. because I guess Casa Mustard is also about that, now. Absolutely. And again, now we're telling the story of Tepo jeans, you know. Sure. Um, I saw Kudzi um, in New York wearing, wearing the Tepo jeans yeah. jacket. It was so beautiful. Yeah. And I think what that means to me, I think as a young person, is the impact that we can actually make. And I think it's showing not just myself personally, because yeah. it's, I'm also shocked sometimes, you know, at you know Absolutely. some of the things that happen. Um, but it really shows the power that we have as young people. Number one, it also shows, you know, how you show up or when you show up, others yeah. show up with you. Mm. Um, and you know, the power of knowing who you are and being intentional about the things that you do. And I think that's something that I'll always preach um, yeah. because it's what I've learned in my journey. And you know, wow. Yeah. So, so you need to come to our podcast, and we need to talk some more. About, about your role in corporate. Mpo, I see you have a mic. Yes, I do. Hi, <laughs> everyone. My name is Mpo Matsego. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat, I, I just wanted to uh, get onto that topic that you were talking about, women not being given the opportunity or feeling used when being challenged to come, uh, when faced with what we call the glass cliff. 
It's called the glass cliff. Uh, the concept that, you know, when men have failed or other people have failed and there's a mess and chaos and from a PR perspective, from a reputational management perspective, then a woman is called on or, and often a black woman is called on to step up to the plate. Doesn't a woman feel used? Um, no, a woman doesn't feel used. Um, I think for many reasons that um, have been set up or, or spoken about uh, on the panel, but also um, I think when a challenge arrives, especially in those kinds of conditions, um, it's a woman who's going to step up and say, let me actually show that I've, I've been ready for this job, I just haven't been given the opportunity mm. to do it. Yeah. And I'm actually going to do it when it's even worse than it was, when it's harder to do the job. Sure. And um, so I think that's the attitude that a lot of women in corporate uh, go into those positions in. Um, and also because they know they've got an army of people, you just spoke about mentorship, very important, an army of people who are willing to support them in those mm. roles. And um, it's unfortunate, it makes the job harder, but I think uh, a lot of women step up to the plate because they're just thinking, here's my chance. Yeah. Actually, if I don't do this, whenever am I going to actually get a chance to do it? So that's why women, uh, a lot of women, it, it sounds crazy, but that's why a lot of women actually just take that on. Wow. I just yeah. wanted to give that um, perspective. On that note of, of mentorship, I think you've also been a, 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 a good one to me, particularly actually penetrating various industry bodies. And I guess that's the power of, of, of mentorship, you know, having someone just to unlock those opportunities. And uh, for that, I appreciate you, Paul. Yeah. Any other question or comment? Max. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Max Shivanda. I own a digital media agency called Digital Show. So we've been in this space for six years now. And I uh, just wanted to applaud you ladies for, especially for you, can see for actually... Um, what you're doing in terms of preserving our stories in South Africa, as also as black people, the issue we've had in the past is that mm -hmm. our stories were told by people that were oppressing us. So the stories were not really 100% of what we are reading right now. So thank you for doing that. And, um, and as a f female in my industry, um, my story is that um, when I started my company six years ago, I was tired of this conversation about transformation in our industry. And I did not see women like me, you know. And yeah. I was tired of complaining. I'm like, okay, Megs, what are you gonna do? What are you, I did the mirror thing. I'm like, what am I gonna do about it? Mm. You know, and today I employ like 11 people in my company. And we will, yeah, so it's, it's a beautiful thing to know that um, even for the young people that are here, to know that as much as we see our industry as not being transformed, be the change that you want to see, you know. And I would really love to see you ladies also supporting black agencies, female agencies, <laughs> because, <laughs> Pat, there is an also an issue in our industry of boys clubs, the black guys that have also now excluded us women, mm. uh, black women in, uh, in the industry. Yeah. So it will be nice, it's so beautiful to see you guys sitting there. Yeah. And I would love to see that filtering, not for my agency, just for any other <laughs> black yeah. female agencies to be supported by, by corporates like you. And yeah, so, but well done, well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank awesome you. stuff. I mean, look, we, we there are some names now that we can make reference of. Um, if you look at the most awarded um, PR agency, actually, in the country, Riverbed by uh, um, Mona Lisa. Uh, we also have uh, Sivu also being on the rise, you know. So, Tishal Shiro also is, 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 yeah, is amongst I mean, them. I mean, yeah. look... Um, I think slowly but surely we are getting there. We are becoming the change that we really want to see. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to respond to that, uh, yeah, to I, those I, kind I, words from um, Firstly, thank Megs. you. <laughs> firstly, thank you. Um, but like I say, I mean, it, it's by no effort of, of my own. You know, sometimes it's just, it's, it's being 
divinely put in a, in a space and a place where you know the, the thing that's happening is far bigger than what you even ever imagined for yourself and I think that's kind of what's happening here and I'm going to literally be honest with you know and say that um, but I think to your point around you know being deliberate about supporting um, it's not just women agencies and yes women definitely need to be at the forefront you know but I think black uh, businesses guys um, you know for me, I, I would love to wake up in a world where, you know, we, we don't wake up with that stigma around, ish, that black agency is going to disappoint me. <laughs> it's disappoint true. me, my Ben. <laughs> you know, because it's there, guys. And I, I mean, I, I, I can also name, you know, there's, there are brilliant, brilliant um, agencies. There are brilliant people that we work with. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I specifically shout out to M Sports, which is a black woman-led agency that I work with, you know, Whoa. that I make sure I advocate for because, you know, the work is brilliant and, but what's, what's key is also to hold people accountable to the excellence we write, yeah. is to make sure that, you know, as much as I'm supporting you as a black agency, I'm not looking at you as that, and, and as much as I'm supporting you as a woman-led agency, I don't want to look at you as that, I want to look at you as my agency that does brilliant work that I can have trust in and mm. work with you, right? If we can break that, if we can break that mirror, and it's not, it's not about, you, it's there, it's a, it's a reality of a world that we live in, unfortunately, and we do need to be deliberate when we have the opportunity and the platform to do so. But more so, you know, let's wake up in a world where it's not even about I'm black, I'm woman, I'm, you know, I'm brilliant, I'm excellent, and that's why I deserve to work with you. And sure. that should be what we lead with. Um, on that note, Mr. T often speaks about supporting versus buying, supporting black or buying, you know. Mr. T, what's, when do we look past that supporting? Because that support, uh, the, the word support comes up often when you talk about uh, black-owned um, businesses. But when we go, when we walk into a Mercedes dealership, we buy a Mercedes because we want a Mercedes. But when I walk into a drip store, I'm supporting like, ow. <laughs> you know, w w when do we as a people look past because that support versus buy? Yeah, I, th yeah, I think it's a problem that we have as black people because we always look at ourselves as charity cases. Mm. Uh, and because we look at ourselves as charity cases, uh, then whenever people come and buy from you, they feel like uh, it's a Sasa deposit yeah. or, or something that they're helping you along. Mm. So, uh, but, but part of that reason is because we as well, we present ourselves as charity cases. We are sure. always so ever grateful that somebody has come here. We shouldn't be ever grateful that somebody is coming to buy our product. We should say, hell yeah, because there's no other better product in this town that you can buy. And that's, what we, that's how we need to present ourselves. Uh, we shouldn't always be saying, hey, please support a brother, man. Somebody says to me the other day, he's like, please, man, I've got people to feed. Just help me out. I'm like, then you should be out in the street corner uh, with, the, with the plate out if you behave that way. If hmm. you are here, you ought to be saying something different. You ought to be saying, um, buy this because nobody makes anything better than this. And we should stop this. Um, I mean, of course, the other thing I can't stand is this black excellence thing, because I don't understand what that whole business is. <laughs> uh, because, uh, be 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 because whenever we, s whenever a black person now all of a sudden does something well, uh, yeah. so black people come running black excellence. What is black excellence? Because that's the discount. Uh, because excellence yeah. is supposed to be excellent. Yeah. So, so it's part of that reason that we now support you. Ah, there's black excellence. Ah, black child, your dreams are valid. Hey, rise, <laughs> black child, rise. <laughs> Uh, black child, your time is now. Uh, what nonsense is that? Uh, you with me? So we need to stop that type of nonsense of, of how we look at ourselves. We just need to, because I mean, I think you've, you obviously have observed me throughout all the years. I've never ever said black child anything about myself. I've never ever yeah. looked at myself as a black person. I've always looked at myself as a professional who just happened to be black. So, but being black does not necessarily, what being black does, it adds color to how I approach things, mm. but it is not the currency. So sure. the problem that we have as black people, we think being black is a currency. You can't fetch anything with, black, with, 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 uh, with, uh, with being black. So of course um, we, we should, I'm not, I should, I'm not saying, I'll never say we should support black people. Yeah. or black businesses. I always buy quality black, uh, quality products, which, uh, and the only reason I'm biased towards um, black uh, uh, designers is because um, the people I talked about earlier, 
they think to have arrived is to go to Diamond Walk. So, so, so then they look, then they look at me and they're like, oh my goodness. I mean, these shoes are from Ghana, from a black uh, de, a designer. These pants are from Rwanda, from a black, uh, from the best uh, Rwandese designer. This is from South Africa, from the, black, from the best luxury knitwear designer in South Africa. Uh, none of them are black. They're just excellent. Mm. And they just happen to have been made by a black person. And, sure. the, and the reason uh, I buy them is because they've got a story and the story that I can relate to that's relevant to who I am and where I am. And I'm not buying them because, they are, because I'm feeling sorry for them. Sure. On that note, ladies and gents, <laughs> that was the Pattern Brands finale 2021. Um, I just want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for making the time to come here, beat traffic, be here on time, and I truly appreciate that. To our storytellers, I mean, this platform is nothing without you. You know, you guys co contribute um, your time, first and foremost. I mean, you were supposed to be celebrating, drinking that uh, castle mixed out, like, why, why? <laughs> but, uh, but you were like, no, I'm going to honor this invite, and I'm going to come through. Um, Hazel, soon to be Dr. Shozi. I just want to say thank you so much for always showing up whenever um, you get called. Uh, Mr. T., you gonna? St I know you hate you hate it when I say these kind of things, but okay, I'm gonna just say thank you for always <laughs> um, availing yourself um, to, to to me and also to the platform. And the, the reason why, I really, again, the beauty about this pla um, in th this platform as well, it it is never scripted. Mr. T called me and shouted at me and said, "Pat, where?" Are my speaker notes or whatever? I was like, Mr. T, this is not the kind of party. <laughs> in, <laughs> in your own words. <laughs> I, I, never, I never said that. I actually, and I'm going to say it because it's a black thing. Uh, I called Pat and I said, Pat, I've spoken everywhere in the world. Yeah. I speak all the time. Uh, the thing you must do when you're hosting functions like this is you need to brief your speakers yeah. or your panelists, whatever it is, the way you'd brief uh, anybody else. Because it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're Bill Gates or anybody else, you send them a, a, a brief, not what to say, just yeah. this is the narrative, this is what it's about, uh, this is, um, this is what, I would, what the perspective I'd like to hear. So now you take advantage because you know me, and, <laughs> and, 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 and you know I don't like, uh, I, I'm not very, uh, I'm not very uh, I don't like to be out in the streets, and I don't necessarily like public life. Uh, and you come kicking, screaming at the evening on the middle of Thursday. I should be sleeping at this hour. But, <laughs> but, uh, but let you do this. But we, we're going to fill up these chairs. So next time you must say, each one bring one. Uh, so, uh, so, so that's how we should fill this. Because I think it's a very uh, good platform, Pat. I think you're doing very well. I'm very proud of you. I don't think at your age I was doing this. I think at the age I was hiding behind. Uh, well, I was marketing director already, right? I was already, 30. yeah. 30. Yeah. At 30, I was marketing director. So, sure. Uh, so after so two years of having started, started working, working uh, after yeah. two and a half years of working, yeah. Mm. Hey. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, there is some food at the back and some wines. Those that are Ubering, cancel on that wine. Make sure that you finish it. No, those that are Ubering. <laughs> <laughs> Those that are Ubering. Um, yeah, guys, um, I hope you found value in tonight's um, dialogue. And be sure to join us again next year when we do it uh, bigger and better. And hopefully you won't charge for tickets and MTN will sponsor us. Thank you. It's Pat on Brands. Watch how you brand it, man. A pat on the back is a pat from the man. Better be branded, man. A pat from the pat is a pat on the brand. If it's enormous, flawless,